In doing our documentaries, we run into bars that were speakeasies, bars that are old neighborhood hangouts, and bars which for some reason are the last of their kind. It's rare to find all three in the same place. But that's what we found here at the Green Door Tavern in Chicago, Illinois. We came here to get a sense of the history of old time Chicago, and that's exactly what we got. The Green Door Tavern sits at 678 North Orleans Street, just a building away from Mr. Beef. And who doesn't know where the hell Mr. Beef is? <laughs> anyway, to find out more about the Green Door Tavern, we sat down with manager and co-owner, Jeff Lynch. The Green Door Tavern is the uh, last freestanding wood structure in downtown Chicago. Um, it was built after the fire of 1872 and then before the ordinance that said no more freestanding wood structures. We're going to pause here and consider this for a moment. In 1871, a fire was started in a barn under mysterious circumstances on Decavin Street. Virtually every building in the city was made of wood, which had become bone dry because of a drought. The fire raged through Chicago for two days, destroying over 17,000 buildings, killing 300 people, and leaving 100,000 homeless. Soon after, the city instituted an ordinance forbidding wood buildings in the city of Chicago. The Green Door Tavern is a legacy to that history, seen in its rafters and its peculiar lean. Yes, I mean, it has, a, it has a nice lean to it. Um, you know, you walk in, you definitely see the lean. When you're walking out after you had a few beers, it's definitely straight, you know? So this, this lean that, that's been created? Yeah, it's a natural, natural shift of the earth. I mean, we're not, it's not going anywhere. We've had all kinds of, uh, you know, structural engineers in here, and it's definite natural just settling. Um, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. The building's racking, or lean, is a bit unnerving when you see it for the first time. But it's been like that for over a hundred years, so little chance it'll actually fall on you. Now, on to the speakeasy. Um, it started off as a grocery store, and then uh, and then an Italian restaurant, which um, was when they put the speakeasy downstairs. It was Vito Giacomono who opened the Huron Orleans restaurant in 1921. He passed it on to his children, Jack and Nello, who did what any kids would do. They turned it into a speakeasy. The rumor is that the Speaky was actually run by the Northside Gang, and specifically by Dean O'Banion. Dean O'Banion was an Irish-American mobster and bootlegger in Chicago during Prohibition, and was a bitter rival of Al Capone's Chicago outfit. As head of one of the most powerful mobs in Chicago, Dean had a number of speakeasies around the city, selling as illegal alcohol. This included the Green Door, so named because of its notable green entrance. That meant the presence of a speakeasy back in the days of Prohibition. If your door was painted green, there is a there's a little back room where you can go and booze it up and play cards or whatever whatever you need to do. Jeff took us down to the speakeasy to show us what we had missed during what were probably the darkest years of US history. Well, at least to us anyways. The room is surprisingly small, but it has everything one could want. If one couldn't drink publicly, that is. They rent the speakeasy out for private parties, and it is perhaps the ultimate man cave. The circus canvases are original and were found in the speakeasy. End of note is the Handsome Bar, which as it turns out was a Brunswick that was originally upstairs, but moved downstairs a long time ago. The Green Door, just south of the main entrance to the tavern, was the original door leading to the speakeasy off the street. Okay, let's try for a moment to put all that history aside and look at what the Green Door Tavern is today. And that is? Well, according to Jeff, it's a neighborhood watering hole that serves pretty good food and great drinks. As far as food goes, the burger's phenomenal. Um, French fries are seasoned perfectly, um, and uh, even the chili is great. Chili is made fresh every day. We'd heard nothing but good things about the chili and the burger, and from the old wall-mounted menus still strewn throughout the place, we knew both had been Green Door Tavern staples for some time. And so when we walked into the kitchen, we planned on trying them. We really did, but then we tried the corned beef, and we've never really been the same since. Jorge Gomez, the head chef, Explain to us the reason his corned beef made all the rest taste like Play-Doh. It was because he baked it slowly for hours instead of boiling it. Thus, it keeps its moisture in and made it melt in your mouth. And so with a whimper bordering on desperation, we calmly requested the Reuben and fries. Jorge started by grilling some rye with Swiss cheese and some sauerkraut. He then piled on some of the most tender corned beef you'll ever try. After seasoning some fries, he tops the plate off, adds a pickle, and some Thousand Island dressing. And this, this is the Green Door Tavern's Corned Beef Reuben. Trust me when I say this, I'm really picky when it comes to Reubens. Okay, 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 I'm really not. But I know good food from lousy food, 
and this was the most tender and flavorful Reuben I've ever had. The Green Door Tavern also features a specialty drink that is reflective of its speakeasy roots. The drink was first made in 1915, but brought to the U.S. in 1930. It was named for the French 75mm howitzer, which is what it's supposed to kick like. We asked our bartender, George, if he wouldn't mind making us one of those drinks. And you know what? He did. French 75, and we're going to start with Hendrix Gin. And just use a normal little rocks glass like this. There you go. Just a touch of gin. Just a touch. About an ounce and a half. Might be a little more like two on that one. And then we're going to top it with a little simple syrup and sour mix. Just simple about syrup and sour. Yes. And then you top it off with champagne. Let it settle for a minute here. There we go. And then you top it with a lime and cherry. It's a classic Tony's drink. And it's kind of our signature drink here at Green Door. You guys sell and serve a lot of them? Decent amount, yeah, we do. Absolutely. What do you think? That's actually pretty good. Yeah. It's not sweet at all. I thought with the champagne and the simple syrup and stuff, it'd be really sweet, but it's not. No, yeah, kind of, uh, kind of sour and yeah, and fresh and light actually. Yeah, it's a perfect summer drink. Yeah, good in the summer. I'm gonna be careful with those, I think, though. <laughs> as refreshing as a French 75 is, George's favorite drink is a Moscow Mule, made with Stoli vodka, lime, and ginger beer. Start with Russian vodka, Stoli. Just about an ounce and a half. A little bit of roses lime, not too much. This I don't like too much. And we top it with uh, Barrett's ginger beer. Just like that. A little bit of lime on the side and there oh, it is. Yeah, that's another. That's really good too. That's good stuff. As good as both of these drinks are, they, like every other bar in Chicago, also serve a liqueur called Malort. It tastes like, well, here's Derek's first try of the drink. Uh, Jepson's Malort, um, made in Florida. I think it originally was made in Chicago, but it's only sold in Chicago, apparently. It's kind of a dive bar thing here. <laughs> and it's, um, it's just horrible. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I think it tastes like a rotten grapefruit. Um, Everyone has their own opinion on what it tastes like. Kind of bitter and just nasty. It's a sipper. <laughs> That's nasty. It's disgusting. Oh. It like dries out your mouth. Oh. It, it goes through stages too. <laughs> oh. yeah. This place is hands down one of our favorite places. From the knickknacks and decor lining every square inch of the building, to the leaning doorway and the speakeasy, there isn't anything about this bar that isn't at the same time oozing great history and utterly cool. Go get a burger and a French 75. Watch the game and just let your eyes soak in all the memorabilia a place like this collects over a century. Or better yet, find an excuse to rent out the speakeasy in the basement. Get a few shots of Malort, then wash your mouth out with a Moscow mule. Despite the aftertaste, it'll be worth it if it's at the Green Door Tavern.